Hello and welcome to the first video in the linear algebra series. So in this first kind of video, we'll be talking about some of the first kind of important parts of linear algebra, and that's the idea of n tuples and Rn. So you might be actually familiar with the concept of Rn to at least to some extent because you're familiar with things like R2, R3, which is three dimensions and two dimensions. So you may be, so you might be idea you might be familiar with this kind of idea already, but we should but let's go ahead and kind of extend this idea a little bit further. So first first of all, let's talk about space in general. So the first thing when you think about space is you know you might think about like quite literally space, like the space around you. In in Earth or in most of rea or in reality in general. We're used to the idea of two dimensions or three dimensions. In two dimensions, we have a surface of some kind, and in three dimensions, we have height added as well. So we have a so we have the concept of volume, for example. So for example, here I'm drawing a cube. Sorry, that's a horrible cube. <laughs> but like my idea is that we have the concept of volume in three dimensions, and we have the concept of area in two dimensions, and in one dimensions we have just one direction. No pun intended with the music. So that's an idea of dimension. We kind of think about, you know, we go in a straight line, we have a surface of some kind, or we have some kind of a volume, so to speak. Like so. So let's kind of extend this idea a little bit and talk about what an n tuples are. So let's talk let's talk about n tuples for a second. So you'll see that this definition might seem a little bit weird at first, but it's nothing that you're unfamiliar with or anything. So here's the idea of n tuples. So for n in the natural numbers, so let me just actually subscript that properly. So for n in the natural numbers and ordered n tuple of real numbers is given by the following. So for n in the real and not in the natural numbers, an ordered n tuple is given by the following de definition. So x1, x2, and so on, all the way to xn such that x1, x2, x3, and so on, to xn is in the real number system. So is is in the real numbers. So we just make that subscript a little bit better. There we go. So basically, in a nutshell, all I'm saying here is that these numbers are uh, are given as a t so these so a tuple is essentially just a set of numbers that are real numbers. That's pretty much what I'm saying. And this thing right there is the set of all real numbers. So nothing too crazy so far. So once again, just to recap, for any n of natural numbers, an ordered n tuple of real numbers is just a bunch of numbers in the real number space. That's it. Just nothing special about this. So this this description might seem a little bit confusing at first. Let's go ahead and do a few very quick examples just, just to kind of describe what I'm talking about here. So for n equals 1, for example, in this situation, we're going to have r1. So an example of this would be in brackets nine. And typically we don't necessarily need to kind of put brackets in this. We could just write it like the number nine. And this will literally just be the number nine. That's it. That's that's all this example is. So for example, if I were to write a number line on this, so if I were to put zero right here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. So 9, 8, 
seven six five four three two one zero minus one minus two and minus three so the order is so in this case the number nine would just be oops that was an accident the number nine would just be right here that's it that's that's all this is saying okay so let's talk about the next example so for n equals two for example you would have R2. So this time, instead of a line, we can describe this in two dimensions. We can now describe this using the xy axis. So it would now look something like this. And then this would be the x axis, and then this would be the y axis. So an example of this would be the ordered pair 3, 4. This would be a two tuple pair. And this would be a, and then more specifically, this would be a coordinate in R2. So R2 just means that we now have two dimensions. We have the x-axis and the y-axis. So we can now describe it, the uh, x, and, uh, we can now describe this point using a set of coordinates. So this is zero. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. So if we go ahead and do this, so let's call this one, let's call this two, three, four, and five. So three comma four would be right here, roughly speaking. So this point right there would be three comma four. Okay, now for the next one, we can uh, talk about when n equals three, for example. So th as you can probably imagine, this would be the three dimensional space. So for n equals three, well, in this case, we have three dimensions. So this would be in our tree. So we can kind of describe our three dimensional space like so. Oh, that's kind of bad. Let's just redo that. So if you go ahead and redraw that really quickly, And there we go. So for example, if we had the point one, two, three, this would be a coordinate in R3. And then this would be a three tuple, three tuple, three tuple triple. And it's a triple because there's, you know, there's three numbers in this thing. So we can kind of, it's kind of hard to draw on this thing, but let's say we have zero. Let's say we have one. Uh, let's kind of keep going a little bit. So zero, one, two, and three. Let's call this the x-axis. Let's go, let's go a bit further. Let's say that's x. Let's say that's y. And let's say that's z. And then let's see. That's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And zero, one, two, three, four, three, four, and five. That would be the z-axis. Okay, so the point one, two, three would be around here or some point. So we go to the right by one. We go to the we go up or this way rather by two, and then we go up by three. So the point would be somewhere around here, roughly speaking. It's kind of hard to kind of visualize this, but we can kind of think about it like we go to the right by two. We go this way by two, and then we go up by two. So it's going to be like here or something, probably speaking. Mm, yeah, that's probably the best way to kind of describe this. Uh, yeah, because if I went here, this wouldn't be really accurate. So it's probably best to kind of draw it here. Yeah. Okay, so that's the three-dimensional space. And then we can actually, we can actually go in higher dimensions. For example, we could say that... For n equals 5, we have, so that's a really bad 5. So for n equals 5, we have r of 5. And in this situation, we have the, five, the ordered, I shouldn't say ordered, but, it should, but it's, the, it's the 5 tuple coordinate. Let's say we, we can just write an example of this. For example, in this situation, we could have 3, 0, 
minus 1, 4, and minus 2. Beyond three dimensions, this is impossible to draw because imagining beyond 3D is simply not possible because we live in a three-dimensional world, so it doesn't make sense to talk about five dimensions. But this is possible to kind of represent mathematically. It is possible to kind of interpret this kind of coordinate mathematically. It's just saying that we have five possible dimensions in the situation. Okay, now the idea is that we can kind of extend our understanding of this by considering other kind of configurations. But let's be, but before we get into that, let's talk about what happens when you have zero. So this isn't really an example, so I'm not sure not going to write that. Okay, so for r equals zero, so r zero, this is usually just taken as a single point. And in total, that makes sense. In three dimensions, we have three dimensions. In two dimensions, we have one dimension. In one dimension, we just have, you know, one line. And if you have r zero, that's just like a point. It can go left or right, it can go up or down, and it definitely cannot go this way in any way. So it's just a point. So R0 is just denoted to be a point. So this is a single point. And usually we just call this 0. So nothing too particularly crazy about any of this stuff. Now, let's talk about the idea of like configuration space for a second. Now, we talk about one dimensions, two dimensions, and three dimensions, but we can kind of intuitively think about this as a higher dimension thing. So let's pretend we have an arm that looks like a, a mop or something, but pretend it's your arm. I can make the arm go left and right, that'd be one kind of dimension. I can make it go up and down, that'd be three dimensions now, because I can go left and right, up and down. Then I can rotate my arm, that's four dimensions. Then I can twist where my elbow is, for example, right here, that'd be five dimensions. Then I can curl the fingers, that'd be six dimensions. Then I can rotate each of the fingers, that's another dimension. And as you can see, I can add more and more dimensions depending on the kind of configuration space I choose. And each of those configurations will add another dimension. It turns out that when you actually kind of configure your arm in all the possible ways of, you know, configuring them, you'll get a total of 27 dimensions. So it's possible to kind of intuitively think of higher dimensions as some kind of configuration space you're working with. For example, the configuration space of a spear would be three dimensions because it's going to be everything that can, that's... Like if I have a if a ball is thrown around a spear, it's gonna be it's gonna be everywhere inside that spear. And a spear is three dimensions. So it can go left and right, it can go up and down, it can go anywhere. So the configuration space of that ball inside a spear would be uh, three dimensions. And then I can kind of think about configuration space and dimensions in that way is in a in a more intuitive sense as to how higher dimensions work. Okay, the last thing we have to describe is the distance between two kind of coordinate points in Rn. So in general, before we get into that kind of distance, so Rn essentially is the set of all possible n tuples. So it's basically describing all the possible dimensions in the real numbers. It's, so it's a set of all possible n tuples. That's it. There's nothing special about this. So for example, R1 would be a line, R2 would be a surface, R3 would be three dimensions, R4 would be, you know, higher dimensions, R5, R27 would be this. Like, that's essentially what it's saying. It's just describing all the possible conf uh, configurations that you can have in, 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 in any given dimension. Okay, so the last thing we have to talk about for tuples is the distance between two particular coordinates. So if I say that P is the tuple x1, x2, x3, etc., all the way to xn. Okay. So if P is given by these coordinates and Q is given by these coordinates, so Y1, Y2, and so on, all the way to Yn, then the distance between P and Q 
You might actually notice from high school to some extent. Then that should be a comma, not a minus sign. So the distance between P and Q in this situation, well, that's actually very simple. You might actually remember this from high school or maybe in middle school or whenever you learned it, depending on which, where you're watching this from. But regardless, the distance between P and Q is just going to be Y1 minus X1 all squared plus y2 minus x2 all squared plus and then we keep going all the way to yn minus xn all squared and then we just take the square root of that and that will give us the distance between any particular set of points in any kind of dimension and that's it so for example in y1 the distance would just be the square root of y1 minus x1 in r2 the distance would just be this part in r3 it would be one more added and so on and so on and that's it. There's nothing particularly special about this. And that kind of covers the first topic of linear algebra. And actually a very important part of linear algebra because the idea of linear algebra does talk about space and vector spaces, which we'll talk about much later in the course. So this does become important in the course later. It's just that we have to kind of talk about what, you know, a space in general is before we can talk about anything else in the course. So I hope this video helped. If this video helped, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you have any, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave your question in the comments. I'll, I'll be happy to answer it as soon as I can. Thank you and have a nice day.